Hello? Uh, yes, sir, we can hear you. Carry on. Uh, well, the sound. We can hear you, sir. No, but I can't. Uh, just a second. I can't hear you very well. Okay. Now, good. Hello? Uh, we can hear you very well, sir. Um, the sound is not. It is audible, sir. I can hear you, but it's, it's not very, very good. But so we're trying to improve here. We can hear you very clearly, but sir. Okay. Well, this will not take too much long, so I'm sorry for this time. I think you have enjoyed the surgeries today. It was great cases by Professor Seti and uh, the Professor. And I'll, I'll show here this computer of, of Maha uh, didn't have the, the Osiris. So this is the screen of her computer. And we downloaded Osiris from the internet. It was a free software. And once you install Osiris, this is a MacBook Air, once you install Osiris, you can put the icon of Osiris here in the toolbar. So Osiris is this uh, uh, green triangle with this Egyptian symbol, the Osiris. So I'll click on the Osiris and it will open. I had put a CT scan of one patient of ours here. So I have the name, his name in Portuguese, Israel Merez Arraiz. He has 16 years old, this is his number, and this is a CT of the Paranaiso Sinus. And here you have several volumes. So I will select the volume which has the most number of images. So select here. I agree. And then once you open the Osiris screen, you have this screen here. The 2D screen, you can control with the icons. The brightness, you can control. You see that he wear bracelets on her teeth. And you can go up and you can go down. This is an axial view. And as you can see, there are thin cuts. And this is the frontal sinus. You can zoom in if you want. Any region of special interest. You can go down. can locate important features. And this is the axial view. This is the coronal view, which is a reconstruction. And you could do the same thing. Going up, going down, anterior, posterior. And this is the sagittal. Same thing. Okay? First of all, I'll show to you how to segment. No, first of all, I'll show you how to measure. Because this is a very important program and you can have different measures in order to do some works or scientific works. So you have this tool here, which is the measure tool. So I want to know the distance between the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus and the entrance of the nose. So I'll go like this and measure. 7.625 centimeters. If I want to know the distance, the IP diameter of the frontal sinus isthmus, I can go from here to here. Oh, thank you, doctor. The distance here, 0 0.823 millimeters. If I want to know the, the distance from the frontal sinus until the sphenoidale. So I put like this. And if I put a pencil, it will be at a distance like this. It would not be a distance good. So I can draw. I put a pencil here. And I draw. Oops. I will just remove this. Sorry. And then I can draw here. And I will have the distance from the frontal sinus to the uh, plano Um I can do many, many things here using the corona, the sagittal, the distance between the eyes, everything, the distance between the uh, the, uh, the uh, anterior ethmoidal arteries, for instance, if I want to know the distance between this anterior ethmoidal artery to this one, it's 2.209 centimeters. If I want to know the angle, I put on the sagittal view, the angle of the nose. So I select here the angle tool, and I select three points, for instance, the angle of the frontal sinus, just for fun now, here, here, and here. The angle is 38.47 degrees. The angle from the nasal entrance. Oh. Here, here. Oh, sorry, this one is not going to go. That's here, here, and here. 
82 degrees. You can do whatever you want here. If you want to know the area of the pituitary, you put the oval and then you measure here the area of the pituitary gland if to see if there is a tumor or anything abnormal. 1.36 square centimeters. You can do whatever you want in this tool. But now one important tool is the segment. And this is important because you can locate several important structures and you can draw those structures into your sinus. So we're going to try to locate the front of sinus. How do I use to locate the front of sinus? So I will zoom in a little bit. Oh, zoom in a little bit. And then this is called region of interest, ROI. Set the file. ROI name, and I put frontal here because I want frontal. Oops, frontal set. And now I'm going to draw. And the key, you don't need to, you don't have to draw every cut. You draw this one, for instance, and then you pass two or three. Draw this one, for instance. Pass two or three. Draw this one more, for instance. Pass two or three. Draw this one more. And I'm following the frontal sinus. Everything that is black here is the frontal sinus. If I find a septum, it's not the frontal sinus. Oh. Frontal sinus in this side. Oh. And go down a little bit more. Frontal sinus. Oh. I'm drawing it. So we create a model. See, oh, the frontal sinus is here. It's not here. Here's another cell. Oh. Frontal sinus. I'm following the frontal sinus. Just follow the air. Oh, frontal sinus. This is not the frontal sinus. This is not the frontal sinus. Frontal sinus again. No. And here, oh, we have the frontal sinus here. And one more probably here. And then that's it. The last cut of the frontal sinus here. But as you can see, oh, there will be cuts that I didn't draw. So I'll put region of interest. I put a... And then... ROI volume, generate missing ROIs. So the computer will generate those missing ROIs from here. See? The green ones I didn't generate was the computer. If you think they are not good oh, for this, this, this computer is not good. So you can repose a little bit here to draw, to increase this frontal science. See? It's very easy, very intuitive software, very nice software. And I can see everything. Okay, now I think I'm good with the frontal sinus. Just a little bit here, a little bit more, oops, a little bit more here. A little bit more here. If you have the disease, not a problem. You just follow the disease. And follow. If you have a tumor, you can draw the tumor. Anterior etymoid artery, you can draw the anterior. Carotid, you can draw the carotid. The other sinus, you can draw the other sinus. Not a problem. Now, you go here and select all ROIs in the series. Set, save, oh, sorry, I put save. It's select all ROIs in the series. And then ROI volume, compute volume. So it will generate the frontal sinus for me. So I'll know what's the volume of the frontal sinus in the 3D model. I'll know what's the volume and what's the size and what's the shape of the frontal sinus. So this is a rendering object that depends on the velocity of the computer. I can put color, the whatever color I want. Oh, this is the frontal sinus, the right frontal sinus of the patient. And I can rotate. If there is a tumor, I can rotate the tumor. If there is a carotid, I can rotate the carotid. And I can see the frontal sinus isolated. If I generated another thing, the maxillary sinus, for instance, of the orbit, I could see here frontal and orbit and maxillary sinus. But this is good, but I'll show you a little bit more of this program. And then, I close here, and I go to 3D Viewer. And I will generate a 3D volume rendering for me to understand the relationships between the frontal sinus and where is the frontal sinus drainage pathway. So I generate this 3D volume, I go to low, low contrast, apply low contrast, oh. and then I have a 3D model of the head that I can zoom in, once again, I can put muscle, I can put the structures, can remove muscle, can remove the structures, I can do whatever I want uh, here in this program. So once again, just apply here. And then I'll try to find where's the frontal sinus here. 
that thing that I draw. So I go RI, RI manager, and then select the frontal. And I want the frontal to be red. So I will remove the green and remove the blue. So the frontal will be red in this case here. So close. And then I go to the cropping tool. The cropping tool is better for me to go in the sagittal view. I go to the sagittal view here. And I want to know the frontal sinus here. So I'll crop, start cropping a little bit. Just a second. I'll start cropping a little bit because I'll just remove the zoom here just in a second. Crop. The cropping tool is a cutting tool. So, okay, okay. I will remove the crop here. Go a little bit sagittal and now I go a zoom. Give a zoom. Oh. And then cropping and you will see that the frontal sinus is starting to appear in red. So we'll go a little bit more here. Oh, the frontal sinus is here. I will zoom in. Oh, see that model of the frontal sinus is here. I can paint the maxillary sinus, the orbit, but that model is here. And better on, I can do a zoom oh, and try to rotate to understand its relationships. Of course, I can put a little bit of tissue here to understand the relationships between the septum, the middle turbinate, which is here, and the frontal. I will change the color of the frontal just uh, for us here. I'll put green in the frontal because I think it's going to be better. I'll put green. So I change the color of the frontal. So I can rotate here and understand a little bit of the positioning and I can crop a little bit more anterior or posterior. I go anterior and I go posterior and I can crop and understand the relationships, the position of the frontal sinus uh, between uh, uh, the structures that I have. I can go up and down, oh, I zoom out, I can go up and down and I will crop uh, in the position like this. Sorry. I'll crop in the axial view. Once more, zoom out, crop in this axial view here. And then I will see here the position of the frontal sinus and the position of those cells that I created, that I created, that I painted over there. I zoom in. And this is fun to try to understand where are the relationships of the frontal sinus and those other cells. See, this is not the frontal sinus, it's a supraorbital cell here. This is the frontal sinus. And I can rotate here and understand all its position in a three-dimensional way. And also, I can understand where is the frontal sinus from down here to understand where is the frontal sinus drainage pathway. But this is not cool yet. The most cool thing is this one that you see. I close here and then 3D viewer, 3D endoscopy. This is cool, this is nice, it's just like image guidance system. So it takes a little bit of time because of the computer. And then here you can change again the, 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 the color of the screen that you want. You can zoom in a little bit, see? And here I have an endoscope and I have an image guidance system. For instance, if I want to know where's the position of the internal carotid artery, I go down a little bit. In this axial view, I'll go a little bit up here, and then the position of the internal carotid artery. One is here, so I can see the carotid artery in the coronal view, the carotid artery in the sagittal view. The position of the Vidian canal, you remember that I told you yesterday, when you see the horizontal segment of the carotid artery, and when you see the vertical segment, the junction between the two leaves the Vidian Canal. So I can see the Vidian Canal here in the coronal view, the Vidian Canal in the sagittal view, see its relationship with the pterygopalatine space, and here the sphenopalatine foramen. Oh, the sphenopalatine foramen, sphenopalatine foramen. Uh, you can understand the anatomy if, for instance, I want to see and I want to know uh, the optic nerve. So I go here, the optic nerve is here, the optic nerve is here in the sagittal. Uh, the Vidian canal once again, oh, here, the V2, the V2 canal, see here in the axial view, the V2 canal here. 
But this is not cool yet. The most cool thing, you see the pink stuff? The pink is an endoscope. So you can put your endoscope, I'll put endoscope inside this sphenoid sinus. And see here in the image guidance system, I can rotate my endoscope, see? See, oh, I can go up, uh, I can go down, I can see inside the sphenoid sinus. And this is before the operation, before we do anything with the patient. We can understand the anatomy. Of course, for experienced guys like Professor Seti or other professors, this might be not very important. But for young guys like me, I think this is very, very important. Now I'm looking at the other side, oh, see? I can go here, and then I can rotate, and I can understand everything of the anatomy. But this is not cool. The most cool thing, I can put inside the nose. Oh. Inside the nose, and do a virtual endoscopy. Oh, going up a little bit, this is the inferior turbinate. Going down, and then going in, advancing the, your endoscope, and doing things that otherwise you could not do. But this is not cool. If you want to go in, oh, I'm going in, and then I go up, and then I go in again, and then I go in again, and then I can see, this is the middle turbinate here, I will go in a little bit, oh, this is a septal deviation, I go in a little bit, the middle turbinate, inferior turbinate, septum, as a high septal deviation, unsnate process will appear in a moment, and I can go in, oh. This is virtual endoscopy. Of course, you can do virtual otoscopy, virtual colonoscopy, virtual bronchoscopy, everything that you want. The unsinate process over there, or not the, the middle turbinate over there. And as you can see in the sagittal view, we are seeing the middle turbinate. This is what we are seeing. And this is the pathway that I, I did. Oh, I went from here to here. The red line is the pathway, and here is the, your endoscope. Of course, I can move the endoscope like this fast. I will go to the other side, oh, I will go to the other side, and then in the other side you see the uh, middle turbinate here. I will go down a little bit, and you see the middle turbinate here. Oh, and I will go a little bit more fast here to see the middle turbinate. It has a high septal deviation, so it's not uh, uh, the perfect uh, uh, um, 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 uh, patient, uh, I would say like this, to perform uh, the virtual endoscopy. And here, I can f f go a little bit higher in the sagittal view. And here, I can understand the relationships of this cell, which is like an agonized cell, and the relationships of the frontal sinus. Or, even better, I can go up to the frontal sinus. I mean up in the frontal sinus here. Oh. I can look up, look down. A little bit, I'm just going to go here. Oh. And now I'm facing, oh, I can rotate inside the frontal sinus and try to find here the frontal sinus drainage pathway from here. And then go from here, from up to down, to understand the anatomy. And also from down to up to understand those holes. So if I go here, I just wait a little bit here. Put it here. And then rotate this in this direction. I want, just want you to see, oh, I will rotate a little bit. See, there is one hole here and there is one hole here. Which one is the hole of the frontal sinus? Sorry, this is lateral, this is uh, anterior, posterior, right and left. So it's a little bit rotated. This is anterior, this is posterior. Anterior, posterior, right and left. R and L. This is anterior. Which one is the hole of the frontal sinus? Which one do you think? Of course, if you look here, you can see. It's the most anterior one. So you can follow this hole here. Oops. You can follow this. Why oh, it's not falling? You can follow this pathway here, going up a little bit, and trying to see if you are indeed in the frontal sinus. And if you follow the pathway, the hole, all the way up, and then you find this. What's this here? the frontal sinus of the patient and you can go in oh, of the frontal sinus and how do I know this is the frontal sinus because I can see here it's like an image guide system I can see here and I can see here so it's like a cheating thing 
So this is very, very nice and very easy to do. And you can measure. Imagine how many scientific papers you could write uh, saying the different, what's the angle between the frontal sinus and the sphenoid sinus, what's the distance between the frontal beak and the pituitary fossa, uh, what's the length of the median nerve. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, for instance, and segment this. I segmented only the, the frontal sinus. Tomorrow I can segment the maxillary sinus, I can segment the carotid artery, and I can create a whole 3D model that you can navigate, understanding the anatomy and understanding the, the colors, the different colors for different sinus. It, it's very, very impressive. So I think uh, it was uh, a very fast demonstration. Tomorrow I'll be there so I can demonstrate to you if you want. And I think it's a very nice program for you to, to understand and to try to learn because you understand the, the, the concepts and the geographical three-dimensional relationships between those important anatomical landmarks. Do you have uh, questions over there? Jo, jo, I think uh, uh, we are going to meet again about 7.30 for uh, uh, this evening for dinner. So if you have any doubts, I think you can Good. Uh, discuss the, at that time because it's getting late for some of the Good. colleagues here. Now, uh, I must uh, thank you for a very, a very, very nice uh, demonstration. Uh, uh, every one of the delegates uh, enjoyed and appreciated your, uh, uh, everything about uh, what you said, what you demonstrated and uh, really they like you very much. And uh, I, I won't be surprised if some of them land in Brazil sometime. <laughs> Good, we are very welcome. I'll see you again. Thank you. The banquet is at 7.30. We are meeting